guys, Tyler here. Welcome to episode 5. We changed plans. Uh, I want to do some unmanned stuff. So I saw I unlocked a couple. I saw this Steve Putnik. And it seems to act just like a manned command module. So you start rockets off with it. So what we're going to do, we're basically using the exact same, a slightly modified actually, Venus. Uh, Mark 1, I got us to orbit initially, and I threw a state Putnik on here, which is a... Yep, it's a unmanned probe. So... Okay, so what we've done is to make sure it's stay... I don't know what it's going to do when it gets up there, but I added batteries to it. Added two solar panels and a communication antenna. So I looked at all the weight of all these items. They're actually less than just the command module. So it should be even easier to get in orbit. So this will take us up in the atmosphere. This will get us the rest way out of the atmosphere. And then we're going to see what happens. Uh, my plan is to save this. Go to launch pad. My plan is to put this in a slightly inclined orbit instead of going directly around the equator because if I end up with a bunch of these in orbit I don't want them clogging up the equa equatorial orbit if you will so we're going to launch probably somewhere between this direct because this is the equator going this way and I'm going to launch probably somewhere up this way or this way and this thing is unstable so I'll tell you what we're going to do we're just going ahead and launch okay and I will see you guys up there here we go Venus Probe Mark 1.
2,000 meters per second fuel cutoff. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> what a bad, bad launch, guys. But this goes to show you, even with a minimal rocket, you can have a horrible launch and still get to orbit. So... so bad. And that'll do if I can make it. I mean, I'll go out to 200. Okay, so I'll cut this while we're getting into orbit, and then we're going to see what happens. Okay, guys, here we are. A beautifully inclined orbit, almost exactly 45 degrees, and going out to 200. 200,000 meters, 200 kilometers. Beautiful for a disastrous launch. And I still have loads of fuel left over. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna click on this. Huh. It does absolutely nothing. is a point of a satellite if it doesn't do anything. Um, well, you got me there. Do, uh, what was I doing there? Oh, there's lots of electricity, that's good. Okay guys, well, we are going to deorbit this puppy. And I don't even bother using a computer for deorbits, especially something I don't care if it blows up. Okay, I'll see you guys on the ground. I'll see if we get any signs from this at all. But, uh, if not, I don't know. <laughs> okay, see you guys. Oh, guys, I got a near vertical. <laughs> Decent, that is awesome. <laughs> That is awesome. Uh, let's go back here. X. Woo! And down we go. Yeah, we're just going to watch this puppy burn up. Because it is going vertical. Here it goes. Expect the same just to rip itself apart. Possibly explode. seen those before. That's pretty neat. Dun, 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 dun. What are the point of satellites? They don't do anything. I did test solar panels though, so that may be definitely something gleaned from that. So I may put some solar panels on a command module and take an antenna up and see if I can transmit stuff. Down, down. A second, I'm gonna zoom out. Cause it may... <laughs> okay, guys, I'll be back. Okay, guys, Tyler back here with you. I did a quick uh, kind of sub orbital with it and put a parachute on it. Okay, it treats it just like the module. So, unless I take it to somewhere I have not been yet, it will not give me any more science. The good news is it's extremely light, so and I could probably delete the uh, comm package on it and possibly those solar panels to make it even lighter. Maybe even the rechargeable battery pack. I don't know. Actually, I'll keep the battery pack and one solar panel. Well, I'll keep both solar panels. So, but what I can do with this puppy is, since it's much lighter, means I can use smaller rockets to get farther out in space. So what I could do, what we are going to do actually, is, oh, I can't get to the map, but we are going to go out to Minmus with that probe, just to kind of see if I bring it back from Minmus, if it gets me any science, just because I really want to know. 
Yeah, I could send a man mission out there, but it's heavier. So I can get, I think, a good bit of science with just this little thing, but we'll see. Okay, see you then, guys. Okay, guys, welcome back to our, hopefully, it's going to be a Minimus probe. This is the Venus probe version 2. Uh, I decided to go with four small solid boosters because I have a heavier tank up here and I want to save as much of this fuel as I can uh, for orbital stuff. So these should have no problem getting us up to about 5,000 feet, 5,000 meters, and for 5,000 meters up to 30 or 40,000, this will do. And then we're just going to coast out to orbit and I'll circleize my orbit with just a tad of fuel from this. And then from there we'll work on a Minmus orbit, since I, I know how to get to the moon now, getting to Minmus should be same concept, just a little more fuel probably. Alright, save it, and head to the launch pad. I may have some control stability issues here, that's why I added the winglets. Okay, I also added this tower just because it was flopping around so much, so... Let's put T on. Okay, you got solid boosters, so don't power up just out of habit, but I'm not going to be using rockets right away. Just boosters. Here we go. Vectoring rocket. Raw, that's frustrating. Okay, I'll be back with a thrust of a vectoring rocket. See you guys. Okay, guys, this is Tyler. I'm back. Okay, as I was saying on the other rocket you saw, these boosters are getting me up to 5,000 and over 200 meters per second. But as I light the first stage, probably around five or 6,000. You can actually watch our speed, and we're actually slowing down initially because the rocket is not powerful enough to pick all this up and accelerate it initially. But we're high enough in the atmosphere, and we have enough speed where it's kind of keeping us going in the correct direction. And then it burns off a little bit of fuel, and I arch over, and then it once I arch over, that's vertically, once I arch over towards 45, it has no problem starting to accelerate us, and as it burns off fuel, it's accelerating even more, and then it has no problem from there on out. So it's only about the first 20 seconds of the burn where it has problems. But that was on the old uh, non-vectoring, thrust vectoring engine because it is more powerful. That's why I've been hesitant to use these because I'm absolutely max performing uh, that engine at start. So this one's weaker. We may see a significant drop off, but it's gonna keep us arcing over and gaining altitude, and as we gain altitude, the atmosphere will be thinner, and the rocket will get lighter, and it have, should have no problem getting us up. So, we will try this one more time. Winglets work great for the solid rocket boosters. Throttle up, and auto autopilot on with the T button for habits. 
And off we go. nailed 100,000 without trying. Okay, so we're going to make sure we're in a kind of stable orbit around the planet. Hundred four ninety six. I will take that. Okay, I'll cut the video here and then uh, we'll work on Mimis. Hey guys, Tyler back here with you. I just want to show you, this is the worst possible way to intercept a planet. But since I'm using our unmanned probe, I'm not really worried if it, I screwed this up. We burned a ton of fuel to do that. It's really dumb. The better way to do it would be to like do a gradual swing around the planet and meet the planet right at your epi 
G. Or whatever it's called in this game. Uh, but I just want to show you the power of that inefficient little rocket we made. Look how far this is going to take me. <laughs> it's basically, if I screw this orbit up, <laughs> I'm going to be like, way, whatever this planet is, Duna. I guess the equivalent of Mars. So yeah, we're a little effort, this little rocket could take us all the way out to this planet Darius, which is the equivalent of Jupiter. But yeah, that little bitty rocket. Get us, and it, if I made it more efficient, if I used uh, the bigger thruster on it, maybe some winglets so I could control it in the lower part of the atmosphere, I could easily get whatever this orange, that green one is out there. Yeah, I have no doubt I could get to Jewel. With just that tiny little rocket. Probably gonna get out there, but Jewel would be no problem. So, yep. Tiny rockets can take you a very, very long way, but don't ever intercept a planet like this. This is gonna be really stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna burn a ton of fuel trying to slow down to meet this planet. So, but it's an unmanned probe. Who cares? Those are the curve, I'd be a lot more careful. I may use these probes just to, like, meh, test orbital stuff out, like, pattern or some things. But yeah, man. 22 billion meters away. <laughs> that is 28 billion meters away. 98 days. That's amazing. So, I'm gonna try to salvage this little disaster I've created for myself here. I don't think I'm going to be able to with the amount of fuel I have, but if I can, I'll try to do a quick flyby and swing back to Kerbin, uh, see if we get any science out of it. So, see you then. Hey guys, Tyler back here with you. We lost that last satellite to the abyss of deep space because, <laughs> as predicted, that was a horrible <laughs> way to attempt to intercept that planet. Or moon in this case. Uh, this is much better. I'm going to... I found out in the last encounter, Mimis doesn't have jack for orbit, so I can't exactly like swing around it very well, and she's going really slow. Uh, I don't don't know what's gonna happen. It says I'm gonna have a Mimis encounter. Actually, let's delete that. Okay, so I'm not gonna quite encounter it, so I'm gonna adjust my orbit just slightly. But I have it very close to my epigee, so that's my slowest point in my orbit. So I'm gonna get really slow, then I'll gain speed coming back. But I'll be going pretty slow out there, so I'm going to adjust my orbit just slightly, try to get these two things closer together, and we'll see if we can get around Mimis. Alright, see you then. Hey guys, check it out, we are in orbit around Mimis. Pretty high orbit, 3000, but still we're in orbit. Haha, <laughs> cool is that? It takes no speed at all to orbit this thing, we're only going 138 meters per second. Man, that is cool. It's a lot smaller than the moon, it looks like. A whole lot smaller. So, we are in orbit. Can't do anything. So, but we're going to pop right out of this orbit, head back to Kerbin, and use a parachute, see if we get any science. See you guys then. I guess Tyler back here with you. Well, I did skip the orbits real quick. It took me a three second burn to get back into Kerbin orbit. And now I'm just gonna set up a little node and we'll come down. Cool, see you guys then. Hey guys, Tyler back here with you. Okay, my periapsis has set just to basically a deeper orbit born, a uh, retrograde burn, blah blah blah. <laughs> and it's only a. 13 second burn and I gave myself about 400,000 meters of pad here in case I mess it up I want careening in the planet once I hit this periapsis I will set another maneuver node up to circularize at 450 and then I will just do a pretty simple uh, deorbit burn and come in nice and easy in the atmosphere see you then Guys, tie the back here with you again at my periapsis. I set a, a maneuver node 
to circularize my orbit. Problem is, since I'm coming in my periapsis, it's going to take a lot of fuel because I'm basically going to be careening towards a planet and I'm going to use my thrusters to basically arrest my descent. So it's going to take a pretty hefty burn of 40 seconds. So uh, it's going to be tight. <laughs> it's going to be really tight. So uh, let's see what we can do. <laughs> see you then. Okay, guys, here, Tyler. Back here with you. Okay, I did that burn. And here are my app. Oh, ass. APG. <laughs> the A1. Uh, that's your slowest point going around the planet. So I used my periapsis to briefly break me when I was coming around the planet. Yeah, it took a lot of fuel. But here is my Apple Asses, so I'm already going extremely slow at this point. So that would be the best time if I want to use the least amount of fuel to get back in the atmosphere. What I've done instead of slamming into the planet, I'm basically going to set a periapsis that gets me into the atmosphere. Nice and shallow. You can see extremely shallow here. And it's going to get me in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is going to slow me down, and then I'm going to pluck down in this ocean over here. Actually, I'll probably pluck down on land. So, that's the plan. And once I get over there... And, oh yeah, and since it's my epigee, it's only going to take a 10 second burn, as opposed to a 40 second burn I did earlier. So, a nice short burn, and we'll be in the atmosphere. See you then. As we're coming down to the atmosphere here. What the fuck? Hey guys, it's Tyler back here with you after that little disaster. <laughs> I was able to get back to where I was. Thank gosh for autosave. So I'm keeping the rocket uh, on for now just in case this doesn't quite work. I could just do a retro burn and I'll fall, but pretty sh Oh, surface. Bam. Looks like I'm going to make it. So I'm going to watch for just a second until we start to get the effects. Go. I think this is going to be a good solid go. Pretty shallow entry angle too, so should have no problems with G-forces. Get ourselves smack dab in the middle there. Oh yeah, it's going to be nice, easy entry. I'm getting no Gs. entry thing. Pretty nifty. Wow, didn't even get out of the green on G-meter. Okay. See you guys back at the uh, science screen. Hey guys, just messing around, kind of practicing maybe some uh, lunar orbit techniques, or lander techniques. It's probably really dumb to be doing this, but I feel pretty comfortable with it. I think I'm going to get a really soft touch down here. down thrust instead of up thrust. <laughs> Whoops. But luckily I was going slow enough the satellite survived. <laughs> oh, that was retarded. <laughs> oh, sweet. 20 science for just taking it around Minmus. Pretty cool. Okay, guys, uh, we'll end that episode here. That's a good solid launch vehicle. I think we can get to lots of places with that. So I may, in the meantime, send a bunch of probes all around the solar system. And get some free science.